Good morning, everybody. Democratic candidate for Wisconsin's 74th Assembly District, Jeannie Bruce, is our very special guest today, Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. For Driver.com, I'm Ben Dryden, and you are watching Dryden Wire Live. Today's chat is being live streamed right here on our Facebook page, and the recording will be published on our website at Dryden.com and on our YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash Dryden Wire later today. As always, if you have a question, if you're watching this live and you have a question for our guest, please feel free to put those in the comments. With that said, let's welcome today's guest, Democratic candidate for Wisconsin's 74th Assembly District, Jeannie Bruce. Jeannie, good morning. Good morning, Ben. How are you? I'm just great. How are you? Good. Yeah, so we're a couple minutes late going live. As usual, we, ha we always have a few technical issues right before. And, and, and you came on uh, like five minutes before, and all of a sudden you were just like, out. <laughs> Something changed in your computer. So apologize for the delay. It happens. Uh, thankfully, most people watch this, the recording of these, not the actual live version. But if you are watching live, uh, please say good morning. Oh, and we already have Emily Gall. I love Emily. Team Genie. That's great. Good morning, Emily. Thanks for watching. So you are obviously, you were running for assembly in the 74th assembly. In You're running for assembly in the 74th. You'll be running against Chance Green. I think it's 75 days from now is the election, so there's a lot to get to there. But first, since this is the first time on, let's get to know you a little bit. Tell us about you. Well, excuse me. <clears throat> I um, was born and raised in Spooner. Yeah. I'm a lifelong resident of Wisconsin. I uh, have a one grown daughter and... and uh, some lovely, couple of lovely grandchildren. Um, I, boy, it's harder to talk about yourself than you realize. I know, it? it really is, like seriously. <laughs> well, let's do this. Let's start from, so you, you were born in Spooner, then raised in Spooner as well? Went to school, went to high school here, sure. uh, went to college in Eau Claire, and uh, later moved to the southern part of the state, and I lived uh, around... Janesville, Madison, Whitewater for, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 years, and then, and then came back here. And what uh, brought you back here, just because this is where I was raised? I mean, I, I was the same way, and I think a lot of people, my brother was the same way. It's, we move away, I, I was born and raised in Shell Lake, go to Eau Claire, mm -hmm. went to the cities, went all over, I went to Chicago and California, but we, uh, we always end up back here because the place is so awesome. But was there something else that drove you back here? Oh, uh, my family's here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is home, you know, uh, no matter, there are certainly places that perhaps have better weather, you might have been able to make more money, but uh, this is home, and I love, I love Wisconsin, and I love, uh, there's a lot of kind of odd things about Wisconsin that oh. I think those of us who have decided to, to spend our lives here, uh, that we just laugh about that I think other people maybe maybe don't get but um what do you mean I, now i gotta know what these are oh well well i don't know if odd is exactly the right word but like i will uh i tend to not care that much when it's cold and so if when people are complaining i always tell them you know if it's zero or above i don't want to hear about it. No. you know it's not cold this is no. wisconsin yeah. Uh, so we're we're kind of funny about the weather. We we dress funny, you know. Um, especially the the I've always loved the guys with their their uh, shorts going. My brother you know, going to wears shorts all year out. long. All year long, yeah. he has yeah. his all boots and shorts. Boots and shorts yes. on. <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 And then of course we have we have our our allegiance to the Packers, which is which is a. A loyalty that I don't think you have any place else for sports teams because we own them. So it's a different, different sort of relationship, you know. Uh, um, I, I, you're right. They're loyal to their team, but I don't know how. What about the players, though? So now we're getting off on something else, but we have to address this. Aaron Rodgers. So Brett Favre, then it was Aaron Rodgers, and there was a lot of, oh, we like Brett better than Aaron. And then all of a sudden, well, holy cow, Aaron's actually really good. So we like him now. And then he leaves. And now all of a sudden, it seems like Packers fans, they are rooting for him to fail. They don't particularly care for him anymore. And it's, but all the stuff that he did. So where are you oh, on you mean Rodgers? because Well, he's on another team. So. Yeah, yeah, right. So it still is loyal to the team. 
Got it. Yeah, but if you leave. So we loved we loved Brett. We yeah. loved I still love Brett. Still love Aaron. But it's yeah, it's the team more than the original players. Well, cuz football's different. You know, you don't stay with your team for Nobody does anymore. No. No. It's, no, it's, to, it's a different. Yeah. It really it's is. It's a different. But uh so what else do I love? What do I love about Wisconsin maybe? It's Certainly love the seasons. Love the people. It's We're not terribly pretentious. You know, you go to a restaurant and ask what kind of wine they have, and they tell you red or, red and white. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's right. like, well, yeah. that, that about covers it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, that's a good point. Now, you were down in southern Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that more of the metropolis, not metropolis, but urban, or were you still kind of out in the country in some of these places? <clears throat> well, I did. I lived in Madison for a while. I, I worked for uh, Senator Russ Feingold for uh, oh, sure. about 12 years. And so I was right out, outside of Madison, uh, Madison, Janesville, Whitewater. But I didn't live in any of the, I never lived in any of the real big, sure. you know, didn't live in Milwaukee. But I, I did go, when I moved down there, the, uh, well, I went, to, went and finished, got my master's degree, and then I just ended up staying. But um, did a lot of work with, I've, I've always worked for nonprofit agencies, and I did a lot of program and fund development, uh, mostly in, in a lot of different areas, uh, housing, homelessness prevention, healthcare access, child care, uh, employment. So all of the kind of all of the social issues that mm-hmm. that we need people frequently need a little mm-hmm. bit of help with. And uh, so I worked with not only the nonprofits, but with some you know government agencies, local government trying to get funding either for them or from them. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and then, uh, and then my daughter went to school in uh, Whitewater, and then went to college uh, in Whitewater. So, I have a lot of ties down there too. But uh, it's just, you know, it's it's such a different vibe. Uh, they have, of course, a lot of like down Walworth County. There's a lot of, of lakes. You have Lake Geneva and you know, Walworth and Williams Bay, but it's a it's a whole different ball game. You know, it's. Um, you're not. You. It's very evident that you're not up north when you're when you're down Lake Geneva. That's yeah, for sure. That's kind of why I was curious about your experience down southern Wisconsin, because it's like Wisconsin is like too different, and I think that's kind of similar to a lot of uh, states. Look at Minnesota, the Minneapolis mm-hmm. Twin Cities, and the whole metropolitan area, and then you have like the rest of Minnesota. And for us, it's kind of like the southern like ten percent. If you drew a line, mm-hmm. like went up ten, fifteen percent. Uh, from the bottom of Wisconsin, Jewel Line, and everything down there, right? Dane County, Milwaukee County, and mm-hmm. then everything north. It's just wildly different. It, it, it really like is. It states really down is. there. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I was I I was a single parent, and I needed to make uh, a living, and uh, especially when I, I at the point where I relocated, uh, there wasn't really a lot of wasn't a lot of work up here, and so. It was uh, really an economic move, and then once, you, well, you know, once your child gets into a school system, you don't really want to be moving them, right. moving them around every every couple of years. So, but I, I spent uh, probably all the all the holidays, the vacations, you know, um, always always up north. You had to you had to come and uh, tube on the Nemecagan couple times during the summer or yeah. it wasn't summer and I even <laughs> when I worked for the senator I actually took him tubing down the Nemecagan did you really and, and <laughs> he thought that was a great adventure uh because well I, well and that's another thing Wisconsin when we go tubing we don't just go tubing you have one tube to sit in and then three tubes for the food and the beverages, the beverages right. Yeah. And, and so we brought roasted chicken and homemade cookies yeah. and chips and salsa. And, you know, so it's like a traveling uh, traveling feast going down the river. And it was interesting because my, my whole family is from Chicago. 
Uh, I'm the only one born in Wisconsin. Uh, they moved up here, and then I was born. I was the youngest of the three kids. And we had our cousins come up, just like what you're talking about, from Chicago. And we went, you know, everyone goes to Jack's, was it a Jack's canoe rental, right? We yes. all go there. We all go down. And like we didn't know, like, this world exists. And it was just weird to us. Like, how do you not know? Like, this is normal. <laughs> and for them, it was like, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. I know. So yeah. what, when did you move back to uh, back here to Washburn County? What year? Oh, about 2014, I think. And when you moved back up here, was it retiring? Or uh, w- you, we know why you want to move back up here. But yeah. when you got here, it was, are you just like, okay, I don't know what to do now? Or did you have like a job lined up? I don't know what you do. What were you doing in 2014 oh. when you moved here? Oh, well, I, uh, I would, I work for, um, uh, actually work for my son-in-law who is a small business owner. He has a software company. And so I'm, I'm the kind of designated, uh, writer and, and I do proposals, uh, when companies want to buy the software or they're, they're, they're doing a search for software and and then they send out an RFP and we spend uh, a long time doing these rather long, painful, complicated <laughs> proposals like trying to convince them why they should use our product. Sure. Uh, so I, but the, the great thing of course about that is that as long as I have a computer and the internet, it, I can work any place. And so- I, I'm in the same uh, spot. I, I've gone on a, we don't really take vacations. Uh, I don't like vacations. Actually, it's not true. It's not that I don't like vacations. I don't like coming back after vacation. I, I don't like that Absolutely. feeling of just like, oh, you know, you're gone for five, six, seven days, and it was wonderful, and then you're back, and like, oh, I don't want to start my life again. Like, that was so – I hate that feeling. So well, we'll do, like, yeah. two-day trips, but I'm not doing five, six, seven-day trips. But I can take my – as long as I take my laptop with, I can, you know, I can't do live shows where I am, but I can still run my business from anywhere. So that's, mm-hmm. it's very nice. So you were doing that. Um, I know you were. The and then I still, I, I continued to do that. Uh, and nice. I still, I still work a little bit. I still work part time for him. Uh, and then I decided, I guess I didn't have enough to do. So then I, then I ran for the county board and then. Right. When, then what, was year, the what year was that? Oh, uh, not very long ago. How many terms did uh, you serve? Like 20, 22, maybe twenty. What? And then no, and then I, then I unfortunately uh, lost my election by six votes. Just this and, last year, just in April, right? Mm-hmm. Six well, not, votes. Well, wow. Yeah, six votes. Yeah. <clears throat> so then, then uh, some lovely people recruited me to run for the assembly. And so, heaven forbid, I should just kind of retire. So No, no kidding. <laughs> just relax. You're in northern Wisconsin. Yeah. Just retire. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, go back to the board because, as you know, I was, um, I'm on the board now in Washburn County. Uh, we mm-hmm. weren't on the same time. In April is when I was elected. Mm-hmm. By the way, I think Emily Gall was in Burnett County as well. Um, what did you like about being on the board and what didn't you like? Well, what I really like about government at the county level is that you can really you can really zero in on how something affects people very personally and people that you know and people in your neighborhood and it so it's it's more personal and and more direct and it's not quite as lofty and esoteric as at the federal level where where there's sometimes i think so much lofty and esotericness that you don't get anything yeah. done because everybody's fighting for hearts and souls but it's um and and if if there is a problem or an issue that you can give some attention to, often you can make a difference pretty quickly. And so, so that, uh, that's what I really liked about it. What I didn't like is really the flip side of that, which is it's easy 
for personalities to get in the way when you're dealing with your friends and neighbors. And you can, uh, personalities are always, of course, involved in, in politics, but at the local level, it can, I think, get more personal than it needs to. And sometimes people didn't do their homework, which as <laughs> as a, I also taught college for a while, and it, it's a little, I didn't like it when people didn't do their homework. And you could look around and go, who did and who didn't? <laughs> oh, no, it was quite obvious. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you know, you could tell from the... It's just, from I, the I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm not saying nothing. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the film on that. No, no, it's, uh, but, no but it, it's pretty obvious when... No. When, you know, sometimes you want to say, read the papers that we sent to you. Well, it, it, no matter where you go, I mean, obviously, what depending on where you stand, anything Republican, Democrat, or it, it, let's even take out the, the, the political identification aspect of it. And just from a philosophical or an ideological point of view, there's going to be uh, different views and opinions. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're active, involved and engaged, you know, I, I can deal with the other stuff. It's OK that you and I disagree on something. Fine. We can mm -hmm. talk about it, but I don't like it when it's I disagree with something, but you don't really know why you don't agree with it. So it's kind of going to what you're talking about. Just be prepared. Know what you're talking about. And we can agree or disagree. That's fine. But mm -hmm. it's the ones that it's I'm not talking about the board. Just be clear. <laughs> no, uh, I know you're not. Any board members I know are watching. you're not. Uh, but no, just be prepared. People. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on a second. We have a question in here from Brian. It's a little longer uh, uh, due to. So we're getting a little politics stuff here. We probably should save this to the end, but I'll read it now. Due to Republican blockage, Wisconsin is one of the only 10 states to not participate in Medicaid expansion, which would bring much-needed taxpayer dollars back to Wisconsin. What is your position on securing those funds? Bring those funds to Wisconsin. Thank you for, uh, for bringing that up, Brian. I was, I was thinking about that, actually, as I was driving... driving uh, this is the unfortunate thing about Northern Wisconsin is I actually had to drive to get to internet that that would support yes. this. Connection. You're in an undisclosed location, but not yes, your home. So if anybody's thinking about breaking into her home, that's not her home. <laughs> yes, right. I'm someplace else. Yeah. Uh, but I was I was thinking about the Medicaid expansion dollars, and I know that many people object to government spending kind of on any level sure. uh, but these medicaid dollars are dollars that we have already paid into the government you know they they've they're from taxes and the, and the general fund and so on and they've already been allocated so it's just money that's sitting there not doing us any good. And in, in Wisconsin, these extra dollars would allow, oh, I can't remember what the number is, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to get insurance coverage through BadgerCare. And it's not free. They still have to pay a little a premium. Uh, and which would make such a huge difference in healthcare outcomes in, in our state. And it also would provide some funding to two and four uh, hospitals. And it may have, I, I, we, I don't know this for sure, but there's speculation that it may have helped in the preventing the uh, hospitals in Eau Claire and uh, Chippewa Falls from closing this last year. So I'm absolutely in favor of the legislature approving. All they have to do is say, yes, we'll take the money. <laughs> My daughter long ago told me, mom, never turn down free money. Uh -huh. Now, I, and I know it's not free, of course. Of course, it's our tax dollars, but everything is our tax dollars. Sure. And yeah. uh, the good that it would do, I believe, so over... Uh, is greater than uh, whatever philosophical issues we might have mm -hmm. about spending money. What other? The other thing is, as long as we're kind of on the healthcare sure. mm -hmm. area, 
the the other thing that would really help our healthcare system would be to if we we could raise the Medicaid reimbursement rates so that providers are compensated in a better relationship to what it actually costs them to provide the service. And it's it's not hard to see why hospitals and nursing homes are having financial trouble when the reimbursement rate is way lower than the actual cost. Do you, would you put that, this topic of um, health care and Medicaid, uh, everything under that umbrella, where would you rate that in the biggest issues in Wisconsin? Where would, you, where would you rate that? Where would you put that on the list? Is it in your top five? Absolutely. And that's something that I, I have worked on in one way or another, gosh, for many years. And the the disturbing thing is that not much has improved. Sure. Uh, I know when I was well, when, when my daughter was young, I, I think I think that I mean I could actually pay out of pocket for uh, an office visit to the doctor, and I mean it was like I don't know eighteen dollars or something. Uh, and now for $18, I don't think I could get an aspirin. So, uh, but the, but the, it, it worked better. The system worked better before. Well, there, I mean, there's a whole global discussion about what happens when the healthcare system is a for-profit system. Uh, we have a and, question here from Steve. Sorry to interrupt. I apologize. Uh, would okay. you support a universal insurance coverage versus universal health care? Hmm. I, I, that is also one of those discussions that, that could go on and on. But in my opinion, hmm. health insurance has since it's it's also become such a huge for profit industry and and it often gets in the way and gets in between a patient and the doctor and not letting the doctor decide what care you need i i don't think we need insurance there there's there's nothing in providing health care that really requires that uh, that middleman that because and as soon, when, when you add insurance in the middle then you've got a whole other entity that also needs to make money hold on a second so, how do we not have an this is a, a world I, mean, I don't know anything about any of this stuff I mean that's true for like, no. most topics I suppose for me um, how do you not have insurance you still gotta well, pay some for it then. Some, some countries don't oh you mean like I, just I, not having uh, 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 is that, that's universal health care, right? Oh, I see. That's what that is. Is like it's just paid already from the government, right? You just go in and for whatever you, you need, you know, and then or, they take care of it. Or between uh, partial, it could be partial patient payment, and and the there's a there's a number of different ways of of doing this, but. It's hard to convince Americans that we shouldn't have socialized medicine. Well, of course, we always had socialized medicine, but if you have Medicare socialized medicine, and it's not evil. Uh, but there are a number of different ways. Uh, gosh, I haven't, I haven't looked at these systems for a while, not since probably the Affordable Care Act was passed, but... but um, I think, I don't remember if it's France or Italy, they have a system where really the insurance companies just process the bills. They they don't really have anything else to do with it. Uh, Japan, uh, I think there's no health insurance at all. It's so rather than another layer of cost or bureaucracy, you could take that money and put that into the healthcare system 
and reduce everybody's costs. Sure. So I'm not sure if I, I don't think the problem is the health insurance. I think the now let me rephrase that health insurance the way it is administered right now does make getting health care difficult for people. But there really isn't a need to have health insurance as the mediator or it doesn't have to be part of the system. I know I'm I'm simplifying this because Well, this, unfortunately, it's a really, it, it, as you had mentioned, oh, this it, is a this is an hour long conversation, and yes, yeah. uh, had we, uh, right. But I, now I kind of want to go back to this top five thing. All of a sudden, now now that's in my brain. Okay. The top five Wisconsin uh, <laughs> issues facing Wisconsin right now. We're, we'll put uh, healthcare, uh, and again to you. So we'll put healthcare in that topic, right? Mm-hmm. What are the other four? And this isn't in specific order. Just what are the five biggest things, or the first five things that kind of come to your mind? And then, of course, what are your views on those? But so, let's, what's the well, next one? Well, before we leave healthcare, uh, I I want to put reproductive health care for women. Right. Now that's not a national issue anymore. Uh, That is a Wisconsin specific issue. I mean, it is for other states, but of course, after the Supreme Court, et cetera, everyone knows how that went. By the way, where are we actually right now? Is it still the, what was it, the 1849 thing or has something changed? It's not a topic I really follow. Is it right now Uh, everything is a, you can't have an abortion for anything anywhere. You have to go somewhere else. Is that still what it is or did that get changed? No, that's not true in in Wisconsin. Um, They kind of, uh, I believe the state Supreme Court said that that 1849 ruling didn't really apply. So so what is it right now in Wisconsin? I don't know. Well, you, you, abortion is legal still in Wisconsin. Um, And gosh, uh, I can't tell you the exact like no, you know, number of weeks. I, I, I think they're oh, still using. Okay. I think they're still using like what was um, the Roe v. Wade standard. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that was. So, but it's well, you know, it's abortion legal, but up to X amount of weeks, fifteen, twenty, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, where is your stance? So, you're elected, and you get there, you're going to be advocating for what? Women are the best people to make decisions about our own bodies, what happens, our reproductive choices. I don't want some employer telling me that I can't have uh, the, not only that my insurance uh, won't cover birth control, but that there's another crazy ruling that, um, It, it, it not only prevented, oh, so the employer can't pay for, doesn't have to pay for it, but but the insurance company on its own can't say, well, yeah, we'll cover that. That was all to do with the Hobby Lobby decisions sure. a number of years ago. Uh, but women are, I, I, it's so insulting to women that there's this idea that we, the government, has to tell them when they can get, when or if they can get a particular kind of medical care from their doctors. And it has gone to such extremes, not in Wisconsin, but the discussion of uh, monitoring women's uh, menstrual cycles and monitoring pregnancies and uh, putting people in jail if they there is some question about what happened to a pregnancy. I mean, it's it's insane. It's it's insane. And if anyone has ever had a difficult pregnancy or a pregnancy that ends, the the idea that women and their family and their doctors are not the ones best equipped to figure that out. It's insane and it's inhumane and it's very insulting. So I think the government has no, really no, they, no role. They, 
I know a couple of people, uh, some in my family, some not, who had very uh, very difficult decisions to make. And the idea that you then have to go and get permission to make your decisions, to get uh, whether it's a, a I think I feel like there should be a better word than abortion, but I, I guess that's a medical word that they use. But, you know, if you have a, the, the, there's a couple cases lately in, in Texas where these women had ectopic pregnancies where the fetus isn't even attached where it's supposed to be. So there's zero chance that that would ever become an actual viable pregnancy. And they still wouldn't allow, the, you know. They, they still weren't allowed to get the medical care they needed. They had to leave the state. So I guess I've said like three times now probably that leave it to the women. We're smart enough to know what's good for us, what's good for a prospective child. And if you don't like our decision, mind your own business. Mind, mind your own. I'm right now in doubt. Yeah, I do whatever my wife tells me. I'm not stupid. Whatever Mrs. Dryden <laughs> says, uh, that's what I do. Okay, so there's two on your top five. The, the, the issues that you feel are the uh, the biggest issues facing Wisconsin right now. Uh, you have health care, reproductive abortion education. rights. Education. Education is the next one. Well, that one's okay. That's not. You can't be against education because they're going to ask where do you stand in education. Well, pff, so what do you think needs to change? Where are we right now in Wisconsin on education? And do we need to make any changes? If so, what? Well, another wise thing my daughter once said to me was, you know, mom, you know how they tell you that you can't fix things by uh, throwing, well, not throwing money, but you can't fix a, a, a problem just with money? By throwing money at it, right. Yeah. It, sometimes that's are, not the answer. It's, it's the feel-good yeah. thing. It's the easy thing, but that doesn't always solve the problem. But in this case, money is the answer. And where does that money go, and how does that distribute? Is it to the teachers? Is it bringing back unions? Is well, it to the school districts? Well, and there's, if you have a couple hours, I'll answer all those questions, Ben. But, um, and and it really, it's money to public education, funding both at the elementary school level and at the college level, and. It's hard to kind of say these things on the record, but the uh, legislature since about the Scott Walker days, and in some cases before that, have really made life difficult for education. Uh, the, the funding formulas, the, the money that they allocated in the budgets from elementary all the way up through college have been uh, historically less than were asked for and were needed. And if you, you know, you talk to your local schools, it's so sad. They, they, they're being forced to cut services and staff. We have you referendums know, every other year, right? Spooner has had one, then Sh Shellac had one, then Spooner had one. And I think Shellac's going to be having another. We're seeing that all over the place. Right, and, it's, and you should not have to right. have a referendum for operating costs. Yeah, I right, mean, if right. you want to build a building, maybe that's a different, a well, different and also, story. Also, just to be clear, maybe of that first referendum, some of these referendums, you should have included that to begin with. Just saying. Um, that's oh. it, right. It, it's not like, oh, my goodness, now we need money for yeah. operating costs. Right. Well, but you yeah. shouldn't need to fund your school with Agreed. a referendum for Agreed. operating costs. That's yeah. what, the, what the funding formula is for. So I would like the, the funding uh, to increase for our, our elementary school system. We, you know, we need school librarians. We need mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. We need uh, the, the AIDS, classroom AIDS. And one of my uh, particular issues is funding for programs uh, for um, special education special needs services. And the feds provide some of the funding to for, for the, the specific required uh, programs. And then the state 
provide some funding, but in the, the latest budget, the amount of money that they allocated leaves a shortfall for the local districts of 27%. So what are your choices? Your choices are to cut something else or not provide all the services that you need to provide. So I absolutely want and expect us to uh, perform our obligation. You know, we, we owe it to the children and families of kids that need some extra help. Yeah. We owe it to take care of them. Uh, so okay. that, that's, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, please. Oh, uh, so that's where, that's one example on the, the um, elementary level. And the other thing that is a particular bone of contention with me is is that, and there have been, I, you know, without naming any names, and it's really easy to look it up and see, and they will ad freely admit it, there are uh, a number of legislators who, for whatever reason, are not terribly, they, they, they're not committed to really funding and supporting our UW system in the way that it used to be. And the funding cuts you I'm sure you've all, you know you've read about about this yeah. that the closing of uh, satellite campuses in a number of I think there's four or five of them and maybe um, or there will be about five of them uh, maybe at the end of this year or next year and it's it's such a short-sighted uh, policy in the first place because the the statewide this now this study is a couple years old but they don't do them of course every 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 year but the for every dollar that we spend that the state spends on the UW system it brings in twenty three dollars of revenue and over the last, well, in the 1990s, tuition reimbursement, or, or not, excuse me, not reimbursement, the state funded about 50% of the cost of tuition. And now it's at 17%. And tuitions and college expenses have certainly not gone down. So where, as we also know, a lot of that debt then falls on the students and their families. And hold on one second. If if yes. every dollar, if every dollar we spend, are you saying taxpayer dollars, it equals twenty three dollars in revenue, right? Then then how are they losing money? Well, they also have a lot of expenses. That that that's not that's not. That's not subtracting, you know, net gross, you know, what sure. that that's not talking about their expenses. But they they the UW system brings in uh well they well they not I'm sorry brings or generates revenue in a number of ways and I I I'm, I know you know this for um they, job creation, uh, contracts that go, you know, go out to businesses, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, it. I'm just, I'm just saying that it brings in money. It doesn't only give, uh, only uh, expend money. Sure, sure. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I should have brought my. There's a, there's a, a report that I just w read that has all these figures in and I think they might they might be up I'll put them up on my on my Facebook page sure. I'll put the the report up there but the the point being that the UW system is a great economic driver for the state of Wisconsin and it not only in the communities that it serves it not only uh 
generates jobs and uh, eco other economic benefits, but it also is a great asset to the community. Not only is there education, of course, for the students, but it tends to have a lot of other benefits for the community. And uh, uh, Real quick, I want to throw this up. This may help. Wash, uh, Washco Prevention just put up the largest con uh, contributors to the UW system economic impact are the UW system campuses, followed by UW hospitals, UW startups, UW student spending, UW visitor spend, uh, spending, UW research park, and UW affiliated organizations. The study shows a 23 to 1 return on investment for every dollar invested by the state of Wisconsin. Thank you very much. That's exactly what we were talking about. Mm hmm. Thank you. That was much more eloquent than I was, I'm afraid. Uh, and so my, I guess my overlying point is it, it really makes no sense to me to... Take money away from that. Why are we putting yeah. more into it? Right. All right, yeah. so let's go to the next one because uh, we're already getting closer to our time, but I want to make sure we finish our list here and kind of get your initial thoughts or share some of your thoughts on them. So we already have health care. Of course, we have uh, 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 reproductive rights and now education. Give us two more Wisconsin-specific issues that you think Wisconsin is facing. I'm particularly always committed to protecting Wisconsin's natural resources. Uh, there would be no reason for any of us who choose to live here to be here if it weren't for our, you know, lakes, rivers, streams, and our you know, forests, wildlife, so on. And the water, the cleanliness, the drink, drinkability of our water has become more of a problem, I think, than a lot of us were aware. So, right, yeah. And and it's it's got coming from a number of, of levels. I, I think we've been aware for quite a while about the runoff, for example, from factory farms and, uh, you know, the forever chemicals, the PFAS uh, chemicals that are, I don't know if they'll ever go away, but well, there's other there's other things. The you name know, we suggests have, otherwise. <laughs> forever. Pardon me? <laughs> I said the name suggests yeah. otherwise, right? <laughs> yes, otherwise, yes. And and you know we had the cleanup from the uh, the paper mills and so on, but there's a there's a lot of parts of this that we that we have to look at. And when we're we're talking about up north, part of it is that we have to I think spend some more time and I'm sorry money is you know there's a lot of really old wells and septic systems. <clears throat> and when it comes to replacing those, it's very expensive. And I, I think that we maybe uh, should implement some kind of a program that, that will help uh, homeowners, landowners to mitigate that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that everyone just gets a, you know, we do it for free, but perhaps it's a loan, perhaps it's a combination, because that leaches into the into the groundwater and into our water system, and it affects everybody. Yeah. You know, we, we, we need clean, uh, drinkable water. And uh, part of what I, you, you can sense a theme with me here, I think, but part of the, the thing that I think is really important when we're talking about uh, protecting and preserving wonderful resources we have here is we need to restore the DNR to its uh, former function functionality there and again I'll, I'll go back to to mr. Walker since he's not not around here not around not in office anymore in, in any capacity but there was a big uh, and, and it was right out in the open there's nothing particularly uh, underground about this, but they really wanted to take the power away from the DNR for whatever reason, and and they politicized it a little bit more so that the, the decisions are made more by the legislature and not as much by the department. 
and the the staffing has been reduced so much. I, I we had a speaker over a, a while ago that he's talking about having one warden for this particular thing for the entire county of Washburn, and that's just you can't have accountability or or uh, prevention if you don't have enforcement capability. And as part of that, there's also back about 2015, 16, they uh, rearranged, restructured the department and got rid of the, basically got rid of the science department. So the, the scientists and, and biologists were, that, that was really a, the model for the country uh, were let go. And especially these days when there's climate change and the, the various effects, regardless of if any, what anybody thinks about what's causing the change in our, in our uh, climate, we have to have people that can figure out how that's affecting our lakes and the fish and the wildlife and, and what we need to do about it. All right. Let's get our last one. Your top five, and you know, there's so many. We could do like a top hundred, really. These are just five things, just kind of randomly uh, that you want to talk about. Healthcare. These are top five issues you believe are facing. We probably shouldn't call them top five. Just five things that we want to talk about. Uh, yeah. Issues in Wisconsin: healthcare, reproductive rights, education, natural resources. What's your last one for us? Well, I think I'll do a. This is more of a um, maybe a more of a philosophical. Uh, issue that I, I really would like to get some balance back into the legislature. If you look at history or even just in our own experience, it really never works very well for very long when one ideology or one viewpoint it has complete control. And what generally happens is things start to go off the rails a little bit and, and there doesn't have to be compromise. And sometimes even, and I don't mean by any means that this is happening now, but uh, there sometimes gets to be a little bit too much um, buddy buddyism, and, and uh, I'm trying not to say corruption, but that happens too. And, I think that democracy works best when we listen to each other, we work across the aisle, and there's more than one viewpoint. We can't serve our constituents well unless we are listening to them and representing many, many viewpoints and not, not just one or two. You know, I've had a lot of candidates on for, uh, for guests over the years, and they all say that and then <laughs> they get elected and two years later it's a different person now that's not true i'm clearly not entirely true i'm exaggerating it's not every one of them uh but things change when you're all of a sudden there and, and you hear that a lot like you should be able to work across the aisle and if our friends we know work with us which they really mean is just agree with us and, and go with us yeah. and that's not well, good either. Just... but you're right when it comes to the separation which it absolutely i would love it if we have like the, i don't care republicans assembly Democrats in the Senate, uh, a split yeah. government. I really think that is good. Now, it slows down government more, well, uh, interestingly, a little bit, but it actually creates more compromise because you're forced to, and that actually leads to more things getting done. So in weird, it's like two things yeah. at the same time, this duality of slowing down, but also a lot of other things are getting done. We, kind, we don't have that right now in our legislature, but we do have the opposite party is, is the governor, of course, a Democrat in, in uh, mm -hmm. uh now you have Scott Walker in my head, uh, Governor Evers. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it's tough to do. It, it, it's, well, and I think but it it's, shouldn't it's, be tough to do. It shouldn't no, be, and it may be difficult to comp to compromise. But if you have a more balanced composition, the, it, it I, I don't agree that it slows it down. <sighs> Necessarily, because some you... things it does. Other things it essentially, I wouldn't say speeds it up, but kind of because other things go better when that happens, and some things get slowed down. 
but I still like that a lot better. I don't want a Republican assembly, Republican Democrat, or a Senate and Republican governor, or vice versa. I don't think that's No, good. absolutely. That's the whole point of, you know, three branches of government, yeah. dual two parties. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're humans first, and then we are whatever else we are. And, you know, humans kind of like to get their own way, and we kind of think my way is the best way, and... The only, we, I'm not going to say that we're all going to, you know, now hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but. Not a bad idea. Yeah. And, and, and it is true that there are a lot of issues that people from both parties or independents and Democrats, Republicans do all care about. Now, let, let's say clean water. Nobody wants poisoned water. You know, no, nobody wants to not be able to have drinkable water. Uh, just about so. everybody that I know uh, that has been on. Well, Senator Rob Staffschult was on a few years ago. And I remember, I, I don't know why this stuck out to me, but mm-hmm. I remember him saying, and I think even Senator, back then Senator Patty Schachner had also echoed something along those same lines. He said, we all, Democrats and Republicans, we all want the same thing. We all want, like, uh, well, maybe not some of the social issues when it comes to, you know, reproductive rights, et cetera. Yeah. It's a little yeah. different. But, you know, we all want uh, better or, or natural resource to protect that and our climate and edu- more money in education and better health care. We all want this. There's just different ways that we want to do it yeah, and different ways absolutely. that they want to do it. So that's like we all want what's best and we all want mm-hmm. to make it better. We just have to figure out, OK, so compromise. But I don't see a lot of compromise as much as I used to. It's no, kind of right. the, uh, and on both sides, seriously, it's no, it's mm-hmm. this way or else. Mm-hmm. And it's what we got to have some more compromise if we want to get some of these things and done. It's because, exhausting. It is. It's exhausting. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I miss the older days in politics. My, my dad was a was a local um, politician and union guy, and. They, well, you and I live in the same area, Ben. So yeah. you know, they, a city, lot actually, of things, yeah. a lot of things got solved down in the Buckhorn. Uh. <laughs> and yeah. they, uh. they, I mean, but they, they were friends. Yeah. They have knocked down. Well, maybe not knocked down, dragged. You know, but there were a lot of emotional discussions. But then they went right back to, they, you know, they were all back there the next day. I mean, yeah. it, it, but. That's what they did. They were still friends, even though they disagreed. Where can people go to find out more information about you and your campaign? Well, I have a Facebook page, which is Elect Gene Bruce. And I have a website, which it's it's having a little technical difficulty right now, but it'll be back up, which is uh, Gene Bruce for Assembly 74. Gene Bruce. I said Jeannie Bruce. You, it, it works both ways. Oh, Jeannie, but not dear. Oh, that's a whole other thing. That's funny. That's that's. I don't want to spend another ten minutes on that conversation that we had the other day. But um, awesome, uh, Jeannie. Thank you so. But very you much. think about it now, now, don't you, Ben? I do. I do. I, I was at the gas station the other day and got the stuff. I'm like, thank you, dear. Shoot, man, I shouldn't have said dear. I got to think about. Is it the right person? You educated me on that. Apparently, that's offensive to some people. So. But I do find it Maybe interesting that women me. can call guys anything they want. They can call them dear, honey, doesn't matter. But, boy, the other way around, you, it, it's got to be – it depends. You yes, that. that's the point right there. It <laughs> depends. <laughs> you get that. The election's in 75 days. Uh, again, you'll be going up against Representative Chance Green, who's the incumbent – I don't mean air quote. I don't know why I did. But it's yeah. just that it's well, a no, new district as well. He's only the incumbent in part of the right. district. Yeah, there's so some new sense. stuff there. So you must have a lot scheduled coming up. So go to your website when it gets back up. Also, go to her Facebook page. If you're watching this right now on Facebook, you have Facebook. Uh, elect Jeannie Bruce. Um, Jeannie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Best of luck to you um, in the election you, in November. You don't have like five seconds for me to tell you one more thing, do you? Go right ahead. Okay. So, and... Well, I guess I don't have to apologize for the fact that it's slightly political. So uh, the the convention and, you know, there's a lot of excitement, of course, on the Democratic side about about our candidates. And we're all we're all very kind of cheesy and dancing and, you know, um, and we love Governor Walls. I mean, you know, if he is not, he's just 
he, yes, we do. do we? He's such a, <laughs> we, he's such a Midwestern guy. You know, I, I, I just, yeah. I, I love that about him. However, there is something that somebody brought up that they are a little concerned about. And that's what I wanted just to share. Mm-hmm. So the concern is that uh, he's a little worried that Governor Walls is the kind of a guy who in the summer, if you leave your car door unlocked, he's going to leave six zucchini on your front seat. I'm not following any of this. Clearly, it's uh, it's levity and it's humor. But what is what now? What is this about? You ask your wife. Okay. Don't you in, in this time of the year when everyone has a thousand zucchini? People just leave them oh. on your doorstep. <laughs> And uh, your front seat, and so yeah, so so it was it was it was a joke. You're the only I figured, person. But I'm like, I, I don't know. I've never left zucchini on. Like I have a jeep, so I, anyone that has like Jeep Wranglers, Gladys, you leave like ducks on people's little ducks on people's windows. It's a it's a jeep thing. So I understand, like it's just like, specific to that. But I know I've never left a zucchini in somebody's car. That's oh, so bizarre. Listeners. Now I'm going to go buy a hundred zucchini, and I'm just going to leave them on people's hoods just to see, you know. And then I'm going to sit on the other side of the parking lot and watch their reaction and see they're like, oh, "What the fuck? Yeah. Why is someone listeners? <laughs> listeners, please send Ben comments and tell him that you all understand about the zucchini. Okay, with that, <laughs> thank you so much, wow. uh, especially. A special thank you to our guest today, Democratic candidate for Wisconsin 74th Assembly District, Jeannie Bruce, for taking the time to come on for a chat with us. I uh, will see all of you right back here on Tuesday when Baron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald and I will be back for our weekly episode of Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy. So until then, thank you for watching, and as always, have a blessed day.